one of my cats is an asshole and the other one is a bitch. <laughs> and look, they're 16 years old. You have yeah. every right to be Dave that way. It. Yeah. And he's just an asshole. So this puke that I'm telling you about, this cat puke. Yes. Is where, because I'm totally Gen X, I don't even sit on a couch. We have a brand new couch. I still don't sit oh, on Oh, yes, it. yes. I sit on the ground mm -hmm. uh, because I like putting my arms up on the thing. And I know I've, I've learned from therapy that came from growing up where your parents were like, no, parents sit on the couch. You mm. take wherever you get. So I always sat on the floor with a bunch of cat piss when I was growing up, by the way. Mm. Um, but so I sit on the floor and I've always been more comfortable that way. Yeah. A little crisscross applesauce. You know, the Mac um, Dad will make you. And I get, yeah, and I get a like stretch, and I have it all in front of me on the coffee table. I mm -hmm. love that. I yeah. love sitting on the floor. Yeah, everyone's like, "Oh my God, no, here, have a seat." And I'm like, "No, I want to sit on the floor. It's yeah. grounding. It's great." Yeah. But he pukes where I sit, <laughs> like on the left side of the couch floor. You it's... know, the floor in front of the couch. Ooh, that's a sign of affection. That is an asshole. Yes. It's like he's the first thing he's going to think about this morning is me. <laughs> That's Zahi's voice. Yeah. I love you, Dad. Blech. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, but hey, let me ask you this because I, I was going to invent a product. Actually, I have invented a product. Okay. Um, what do you clean up your dog puke with? Uh, I have a series of moist rags. That I rinse really? out, and I use, and I rinse out, yeah. Wow, so you don't, you're not ruining the environment with paper towels? Uh, it depends uh, on, on the, um, on the um, should we say, the density of the vomit. Well, that's true, that's true, yeah. I, I mean, we have a three-part system. You have the paper <laughs> towel to pick up the thing. Yeah. And then I have a spray. Yeah. And we actually bought a, this recyclable product carpet. Mm -hmm. specifically for puke mm -hmm. because it doesn't <laughs> hold the puke in it. Wow. And it, it. Which, by the way, this is a hilarious conversation. AFW, <laughs> if you have a chance, you guys, that's who has them. Um, but it's made out of recycled like plastic bottles. Wow. And so it doesn't keep the puke in it and it doesn't stain. Oh and my. so, um, yeah. So <clears throat> anyway, but the way to clean it up is you pick up the regular stuff and then you spray and you kind of scrub out the stuff and then you kind of put a damp towel on it for the rest of it. Yeah. And um, anyway, so I had this thing that I was like, I need to make some money on my cat yes. travails. And so let me pitch this to you. Here it is. Can we, can we right, do it like, kind of like an ad? Like an ad? Like, like uh, oh, no, the cats have vomited again. What do I do? Dude, that's exactly what it is. It's like, <laughs> we love our furry pets, don't we? They're members of the family. But sometimes, <laughs> blah, 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 <laughs> maybe a super cut of all the pukes and everything. It's like, they can make a little mess. So why we'll take care of it. Welcome to Two Shots and a Royalty Check, brought to you by Venmo. Your money, your move, and liquid death. Murder your thirst. Let's get back Kitty into it. Kitty cat. Paper towels, kitty cat, paper towels. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> and it's like, instead of using people paper towels, use these biodegradable, non, it'd be non GMO, gluten free, <laughs> and made of all recyclable materials, kitty cat paper towels. And the kitty cat paper towels have little paw prints on them. Oh, very nice. So you, don't mess, so you don't mix them up with your paper towels. Yeah. That sounds and lovely. And they're recyclable, and so that's why it's okay to throw them away. Look, I'm throwing up puke. Well, why aren't we regular throw paper away. towels recyclable? Yeah, absolutely. But they're not bleached. They're non-GMO, gluten-free. They're fat-free. It's uh, no preservatives in these paper towels. <laughs> <laughs> it's caffeine-free, Yeah, low and then there would be puppy dog paper towels, too. Yeah, those, those are going to little For all your little whoopsies. <laughs> we have so many whoopsies. And I think currently upstairs, uh, the puppy must be feeling better because it sounds like there's some serious wrestling going on up there. I'm like, taking to see if like the, the 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 ceiling light is just. Oh my god! Um, so uh, so hi okay. everyone. Hi, hi. Welcome, welcome to, puke to talk. The <laughs> Everybody's like, oh wow, I didn't know I'd <coughs> wow, be hearing they... puke today. By yeah. the way, uh, for all of her um, millions of fans out there, Kelsey is out today. Oh. And she says she's sick, but we know better. By the time you hear this podcast, you will know 
the Denver Nuggets are the world champions of the uh, NBA. Yeah, they are. And um, I think she was downtown turning over cars and setting them on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny is like we were out and the, our dogs were furious. So we watched the we watched the game five last night, as as you do. And uh, we're watching, and and I'm getting all these questions. The victory buzzer sounds. All of a sudden, all the fireworks are going off. All the dogs are losing their damn mind. And Katie and I are standing in the backyard going, I can't tell the difference between the fireworks and the gunshots anymore. <laughs> nope. <laughs> That's what it's like living in Capitol Hill. Yep. You just... And not only that, but... <clears throat> Round about mid, round about mid May to early June is when people in Capitol Hill start buying fireworks. Yes, and so every night at about ten o'clock, ten thirty, there are two fireworks that go off down here pop, pop. that sound like a bomb. Yeah, I think they're setting them off in like a dumpster. Yeah, probably. And uh, so you know, but we've gotten pretty good. That's not a shotgun. That's not yeah. a Glock. That's yeah. a firework. And uh, but last night it was it was on. I had an international friend ask me about that. Like, so y'all in in America just like shoot they didn't off say fireworks? Not, inter- not no. international. Well, international she was friends. trying to be local. You know, she's trying to be cool. Do you find American <laughs> douchebags do this when you celebrate? She's mm-hmm. Scottish. She's like, hey, fuck you, so, setting off fireworks for. So, so when you do, so when you're blowing things up, do you blow things up just for fun or is it purely celebrational? Don't the animals hate you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Well, sort of the Scottish. <laughs> yeah, and here's yeah, sorry. That's true. And you have every reason to. Um what what's funny is that my cat, so my two cats, right? Zahi and Izzy. Yeah. Zahi's the asshole, Izzy's the bitch, little bitchy kitty. Um uh. Bitty. She's the kind of cat that, you know, when cats walk by and you're like, oh, hi, Izzy. Hi, girl. And you just like, you try Give to pet them brush. softly as Give they walk something. by. Yeah. She will contort her body. To avoid you. To avoid that one <laughs> hand. That's what a bitch she is, right? Okay, but but here's, here's, the side, here's the side part of this. Yes. When it's thundering, which it has been for yeah. nearly a month now or a week yeah. at least. Um, or when fireworks go off. She becomes a little two-year-old, Aww. and she runs over to Daddy and just sits by me. That's like, your lady, right? Just <laughs> she she runs over to me and she's like, "You do hear that, right? Yeah. You hear that, right? Yeah. Like something's going down. Look at you. What are you doing? You're just sitting there watching TV. You're playing a video game. There's a fucking war going on outside. There's a war going doing? on out there. Yeah, yeah. So that's what she was doing last night. And then there, I try to pet her, and she doesn't recoil as much. Yeah. Aww. Um, and then she's like, "Oh, okay, I feel better." And then the second, you know, I don't know what it is. Maybe say say 15 minutes after the last kaboom. Yeah. Uh, I know. When she has returned back to Bitchy Kitty, because I'll go to pet her. I'm like, oh, that's a good girl. And and then, boom, she starts slinking off. Like, I'm done with you. I'm sorry. Is Bitchy Kitty a band name? Because it fucking should it be. It should be. It, it should, should be, be right now. It should be. We are Bitchy Kitty. Bitchy Kitty. <laughs> and I believe earlier we had House Trousers. That band name is still available. I just wanted to point out to everybody, we, House Trousers is still available. We got to sell those T-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> House trousers and bitchy kitty. House trousers World and bitchy kitty coming World on tour. North America <laughs> tour. Yeah. Uh, did I send you the link to so shows Devin again is touring? Yes. Yeah. I'm totally excited about that. Me too. I don't know who she's opening for. <laughs> well, I it. I Do think you know that who the, the tour... other artist is. I don't want to put her on blast, but I don't know. I think the tour to the Marquee. That's a pretty small venue. I'd imagine she might be doing it on her own. Um, no, she's opening. Really? I know she's opening yeah. on um, not Demi Lovato, or maybe it's just part of it. I know there was an earlier tour that she was opening on, but I don't know about this one. But I'm I'm going to that show yes. in October, and I'm assuming you're going to be my date. Yes, Excellent. it's in October or November. It's it's, it's one know, of those fall in the fall. Yeah, yeah. In no, the we're fall. totally going. Yeah, that, I'm excited. You know, and, well, and, and I yeah. I know her. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to say it, but I know somebody around her that's going to be there. Nice. So we'll we'll be able to say hi, Z. We should go say hi. That's really, I'm excited about that show because I think she's fucking great. She is amazing, and this is going to be a big run for her in the next mm-hmm. six months. I think. Yeah, she's been working on some really good music. Cool. So like her TikTok, she's got some, she's got a little some bumps out there on it, and yeah. uh, 
She's she's finding a good stride for choruses. I mean, she had such a good run with the previous stuff. But, yeah, yeah. But I think that she was stuck in a songwriting deal and then was going to like do and and like it was going towards a label thing because she's young. Yeah, yeah you know, of course. Yeah, explore that shit. Get that money. Yeah. Um. And but it didn't it didn't go <laughs> completely all the way. And yeah. So um, which As it that's doesn't. fine. Yeah. We can help her go a little bit further. Yeah. I I hope. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm totally excited about that. Um, so, yes, so Kelsey isn't with us, and she told me, keep it tight. We keep have done clean, none of that so far. As we know that there's a very long podcast coming out this week. <laughs> Surprise! Or no, I guess it's last week. When you hear this, you'll be like, Jesus, how long is this one going to be? Um, so this one will be tight, I think. Yeah. Um, so uh, I wanted to get to a few things here. Yeah. Um, I, yep. Look on Twitter, Two Shots Music Pod at Two Shots Music Pod. Um, we're you know we got a small but mighty little thing going over yeah. there. And look, Twitter is problematic. I get it, but there are some good conversations <clears throat> that go on over there. And I just wanted to address something. I'm not going to put him on blast, okay? And he probably won't listen to this. And he has a newsletter, and he's navigating Web 2.0 to Web 3 about the music industry. And, oh. And all of these guys are just, and mostly guys. Uh, yeah. There's Sheree who, who does water <laughs> and music, and I love her to death because yeah. she's very business-oriented. Yeah. She's wide-eyed about it. Yeah. Um, but some of these other people, they want an industry... That doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they want to bitch about this industry. Mm-hmm. And they use these tired tropes such as if Spotify paid artists not just 70%, but all of the money mm-hmm. that they get, then it would be point zero zero five three. There. Are we done with that? We need a new system. Okay? So that was one of the things. Ooh. I let it go. I didn't yeah. argue with this. <laughs> I, I sat back and said, you guys will tire yourselves out eventually. <laughs> one of the other things that was said was, um, oh, God, what was it? Oh, your music business should be run like a startup. And I was like, At oh, a loss? I could not agree more or could not yeah. agree less with you. Yeah. Uh, that like... But all the things in the thread were like, not what startups are. Like, don't spend money. I'm like, that's not a startup. Startups take on a massive debt to try yep. to get market you mm-hmm. know, uh, share. Um, another one was like, build and nurture a team that lasts a long time. No, that's also not a startup. Uh, you have, you have yeah. the first things, and the first thing you cut <clears throat> is the people who get paid off when you get acquired. Um, you know, there's a bunch of things. Like, don't spend money. And I was like... Dude, that's my problem with artists these days is like they're not spending money on their business. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, you as an artist, you need to pay attention more to branding than the product, which the product are your is your song. Yeah. And I'm like, there's so much wrong with that. I don't know what to say. Yes, you are a brand. Yeah. But why wouldn't you spend time perfecting your product which rapper like, looks better does it the is reason it the why we bar? still buy coke <laughs> is because it's good every time you open one yeah I it's was not because s- of marketing i i, I think it is part of it is <laughs> no it's both but yeah. but i mean but i wouldn't drink something shitty or i don't get that dopamine yeah. hit every time i open a coke yeah because it's good every time every fucking time it's good except for when it's flat or warm or we you know, whatever it has to yeah. be optimal yes optimal coke optimal coke you guys you guys know yeah. what i'm talking about man yeah optimal coke man <laughs> isn't that a transformer that's oh the God, one that's always racing places without stopping this is very much an adult podcast. Sorry, you guys. Um, <laughs> sorry, no, Kelsey. <laughs> you're you're right about that. Like because having a great song is what gets you to zero. Yes. And you know, if you, you don't have a good product, you're not gonna. Mar- no amount of marketing is gonna make it. Yeah. Especially yeah. in music. Mm-hmm. Like your song mm-hmm. will outlive your brand. Yeah. You know. Uh, anyway, it just it pisses me off. So yeah. anyway, I wanted to bring this up and kind of talk about a few things, and that is. One, Spotify does not pay artists. Mm-hmm. So I let it go for a minute. <laughs> oh. and then, but then he brought up something else. He's like, no matter how much, everybody was like, and he's got a bunch of like follower boys, mm-hmm. crypto boys that are following him, cheerleaders. They all want it to go to NFTs and blockchain and a direct to fan connection. I can hear Scott Ewell getting too messant as we speak. I know. Know what would fix that? (laughs) (laughs) 
Shout What's out to up, Scott, Scott Yule. Um, <laughs> so, so then he said, he, uh, you know, there were people like, well, they should raise the prices so that there's more money, and then that would pay out artists more. And I was like, oh my god, it hurts me so much. I'm about to have a stroke. <laughs> Wait, and so oh, I had to, another one. Yeah. So I had to. And by the way, I never did have a stroke. But then I had to jump in. I was like, yeah. dude, I know you mean well. Yeah. But you're wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> yeah. Spotify does not pay artists, mm-hmm. and. And so can we, you know, I guess we're going to have to, you know, jump into this. And it was like, okay. And he was like, what do you mean they don't pay artists? I was like, they don't. They pay recording royalties from the master side to distributors, which, uh, and, so, and sometimes direct to labels. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the labels pay the artists. They pay mechanicals to the MLC, mostly. Mm-hmm. Um, but it never goes directly to the artist. And then they pay performance royalties to the PROs. That's ASCAP and BMI and stuff. Yeah. That does not go to the artist. That goes to the publisher. Then, then it goes to the songwriter. And so I was like, you're just, you're wrong. Is And it's okay that you're wrong. It's like unfortunate, um, but you're mistaken. <laughs> and yeah. then on the payout side, and this is, a, <clears throat> look, you guys, this is public knowledge. So stop spreading this. But Spotify does not pay out 70% off the top. That would mm-hmm. be what's called in business gross. Yes. Gross revenue. No, they do not. And they even tell you they do not. Yeah. It is absolutely net. It's after taxes, subscription fees, sales commissions, all the rest. Yeah. And and even then, that's not even a realistic version of how they pay it out. Yeah. It gets paid out in stream pools, which are in buckets. Those buckets have to do with whether it's ad-supported or premium. Mm-hmm. Those buckets have to do with whether it's in this territory or that. The, that bucket has to do with whether or not your stream share is part of a major label group or a smaller mm-hmm. group. It's just a thousand different ways. But God, it is not off the top, and he doesn't get this. Mm-hmm. And so I had to argue, and I'm sorry I became that Twitter guy on our Twitter account. But that Twitter guy. For some more of this, you can follow us on uh, Twitter <laughs> at Two Shots Music Pod. <laughs> I, but you know, again, the, so like, I wanted to spell some of the myths. What, yeah. what are your some point of views about? Are you hearing this crap still from people I, when you do the Spotify, uh, you know, master classes yes. and stuff? Yeah, I think it's I think it's a fundamental misunderstanding of what a what Spotify is. Um, it's it's not it, it's you know like it's a money making platform. It's a delivery system. It's a and it's going to become it's at some point in time it's going to become an all encompassing uh, digital environment. I believe that will be there already are some social elements, but it's basically it's a. It's a money printing machine for a bunch of Swedes. <laughs> well, for shareholders. Yeah. Um, right? But, I mean, because that's the thing. Yeah. Those Swedes that are making that money is based on the equities they hold and the yeah. shareholders. Yeah. But it's a delivery system, and we as artists uh, have uh, agreed to this system at this point mm, for the most yeah. part. You know, like, you know, silent um, acquisition, you know, you know. Or acquiescence, I should say, um, but I think it's a, a lot of this is as a, is a fundamental understanding because it's easier to have a soundbite that says um, the artists aren't being paid fairly versus getting into the complexities of the math that it that 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 is happening to pay based on streams and the marketplace that is open to artists now, especially with regards to Spotify versus Apple Music. Uh, versus Deezer, Spotify is the biggest music streamer marketplace in the fucking universe right now. I don't know. They may Ooh, have someone have to, on Epsilon Prime. Re- can I? Can I? Yeah. Can I jump in there? Of course. Uh, that actually is YouTube. But oh, yes. Oh. But as far as a DSP, yes. But YouTube is the global largest music streamer in the world. Okay. Fair. Fair. Damn. But as far as what we think slapped. of Spotify, Apple, Deezer, Tidal, MySpace, uh, who's it? Napster is a I streamer. Got, I got yes, sent please. a MySpace link the other day to some old songs. Uh, they were not still up there, but all the titles are there. <laughs> no, because they um, lost them. But um, w- is, can, would I be correct in saying that um, as far as gross revenues paid out, does Spotify... How does Spotify compare to YouTube with regards to that? Because even though YouTube is the biggest 
music search engine and player in the world, their their streaming rate or their their pay rate is much smaller than that of Spotify. So is Spotify much the smaller. biggest biggest paying DSP? Yes, and it, and it partially has to do with how they're um, set up. So the, like the money you would make more on YouTube comes from monetization and ad yeah. sharing revenue, that sort of yeah. uh, 50-50-ish split with YouTube. Mm-hmm. But you do get paid for every piece of song that gets played on YouTube, but yeah. it's a public performance royalty. You don't get paid like a, a recording royalty uh, like you do on Spotify, on an on-demand system like Spotify. Mm-hmm. And so they are kind of different, but as far as how many music plays there are, it... it YouTube is far bigger. Yeah. And, but, but that's, that's neither here nor there. That's kind of a little, it's a little shading of the data. But, yeah. but basically, in our world, Spotify is the market leader. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Th- th- thanks for, <laughs> thanks for the light slap across the I'm face. I'm sorry. I just, like, no, no. Well, I mean, t- we were just t- talking about correcting people. And so I don't, now people <laughs> are going to come back at too. us and That's be like, totally Stu was wrong about Spotify. What about fucking Tandex? <laughs> you know, oh my God. Here we go. <laughs> he like took off a, like a, a, uh, a, a soft, uh, you know, velour lined glove and lightly slapped me across the jowl with it. By the way, Yandex is the streamer in in Russia, and Tencent is the streamer in China, and it's pretty hard to beat that when you have billions of people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, but you know, yeah. anyway, yeah. but Tencent also owns part of Spotify, and Spotify owns part of Tencent. So we get onto a whole lot of things. But yes, yeah, Spotify yeah. is the leader. Um, yeah, I and I and again the 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 the. We're provide it's a it's an entertainment uh, prov- providing uh, platform, and but the goal of the platform is not to provide entertainment; it's to provide content that generates revenue. Right, right. That's the bottom line. And so, the the un, if the if your understanding is going into it that that you have that, that yeah, I'm so clumsy today with my words. I've been up for a long time. Me too. Um, uh, if you understand that this since is a money generating since 1988, since 1988, the 1900s, kids. Um, right, since the last century. If you understand, it's like anything in in any of these businesses. Your product, your music, your music becomes a product, and you have to find a way to sell that product. Um, yeah. You can sell that. Say if you got like, say you make a candy bar, right? You can have that candy bar on the shelf at gas stations, grocery stores. Um, depending on your where you're selling it, you're probably going to sell more in one location versus another, and you know this, that, and the other thing. But one place is going to pay you a lower, you know, percentage on. On, but they're going to sell more units. You know, it's it's basically that kind of kind of market. Yeah, and um, the fact and it's of the matter is, it is well. You know, the, Reese's, the, Reese's is cheaper in Mexico. Yeah, than it is in America. It's called something different in France, and well, you know, uh, and it's got a little bit of Pierre's. a different taste to it. You know, so that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, it's localized. Yeah, Pierre's Reese, Pierre's peanut butter cup. <laughs> oh way. Oh, we, we. Uh, I'll give you that real quick statistic. So uh, Spotify in the first quarter, 515 million users. Um, wow. uh, and that is what's called a monthly active user. Uh, someone that touched it every month yeah. um, of that. Well, they call them active listeners, but that's not actually true. That's a different metric. Um, yeah. 210 million. So less than half are less premium. Yeah. The other half are ad, ad, are ad revenue supported. And you would have to understand that Spotify is in, I think, almost every country now. So it's, yeah. in, almost, it's in every territory, certainly, mm-hmm. but in almost every country. And there are many countries that just the, the economics of how it works um, do not match subscription models. They're just not used to. They don't have a credit card that they put in to get mm-hmm. a monthly payment. So yeah. ad revenue is the only way it works in a lot of places. Um, mm-hmm. And in the U.S., Spotify, I believe, is 88 million um, mm-hmm. is what we have in the U.S. out of, you know, we have 250 million adults, 100 or 325 million residents in yeah. America. And so, you know, still a ways to go. Yeah, still at least still slightly less than half of the premium users. 
I wonder how much yeah. of that eighty eight million are constantly less than half. They can yeah. never break half. And yeah. and the ad the ad supported side of Spotify is always meant to drive you to premium. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just such a shitty model for music listeners. Yeah. I, I know the young people are like, oh my God, that guy pays for Spotify. I've seen comedians make fun of it. Um, from the young people, like you're a sucker because you pay for it. And it's like, how are you not a sucker to where you want to hear a fucking Geico ad before you listen to Taylor Swift? Like, yeah. that is a bad <laughs> listening experience to me or Drake or whomever. Yeah. You know? And it's yeah. like, uh, and so I hate the ad stuff. This is, I do love the Apple product because yeah. there are no ads on there. Yeah. Um, and so I don't think ads, I don't mind ads being in your platform. Mm-hmm. I don't like ads being around music because I feel that that's an outdated way to do it and it ruins yeah. the experience. And especially in Spotify, well, they'll break a song for mm-hmm. an ad. Oh my God, really? Or you'll break an album listening thing. Jesus, radio didn't even do that. You know, yeah. they play four and then an ad and, three yeah. and then an ad. Yeah. So I don't, I don't like that. But it is, but I think that the other thing that people don't, don't really get about this industry now Mm -hmm. is that this right okay so the reason why they're saying all this is we want Mm -hmm. to get rid of spotify you need a direct to fan connection man Uh, you need to the fans matter nfts man and just fucking and so i had this argument yesterday with someone and you tell me if i'm wrong (laughs) 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 I, i can prove to you that I'm right. In two sentences, that music at NFTs have failed. Mm-hmm. We are in the year of our Lord 2023 right now, sometime in the spring when you hear this, okay? Yes. Since 2020, around three years ago, mm-hmm. there have been only two to three million music NFTs sold at all in total. Hmm. That includes Nas, Steve mm-hmm. Aoki, Blau, all the huge motherfuckers. Yeah. Right? As well as all of you that have scammed your listeners to get their <laughs> seven music NFTs. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So that's one sentence mm-hmm. that tells you. And it's going down, by the way. Mm-hmm. It's not speeding up. It's not gaining steam. It's not... Yeah. More and more people aren't buying music NFTs. Here's the <clears throat> other sentence I can tell you. I know music NFTs are a fail because the fans don't want them. Mm-hmm. And I can prove that to you because Taylor Swift hasn't done one. Yeah. That's fair. If fans wanted them, she would have done it and done it brilliantly. Yeah. And fairly. And been the most sold and the most ever. Like, because she understands fan bases. She understands technology. She understands Mm -hmm. the artwork of it. So they don't want them you're pushing mm-hmm. it on each other and just sucking each other's dicks about music NFTs. Real <laughs> fans don't want them. If they did, real musicians would be sold out of them forever. And yeah. real ones that have real fan bases, they would have done it. Yeah. And so, and, and this goes a little bit further to the Web3 promise of direct to fan, right? Mm-hmm. That I, this was the argument I had with someone yesterday. I know you want to get rid of this industry that we have. They don't understand copyright. They don't Mm -hmm. understand rights holders, the difference between master and publishing. They think Spotify pays artists. Mm -hmm. We need to just have it direct with the fans. I was like, okay, guess what? You can do that today. Yeah. Start a Patreon, start a stand store. Mm-hmm. You can have Stripe or whomever, Venmo, what? Hi, Venmo, your money, yeah. your move. You can Thanks, have Venmo guys. do your card processing. Yeah, you lose yeah. 2 to 3% on whatever. But, but you, you lose that on any card right. uh, service. But you could do a subscription model with all of your super fans right now, right? Eight mm-hmm. bucks a month, and you give yeah. them a surprise. One month it's a song, the next month it's a t shirt or a hat. Yeah. Maybe it's a super video. You can do that right now. Why mm-hmm. aren't you? Because your fans don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. Because your fans won't pay you eight to 10 bucks a month for anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like they won't. So this idea of this super fan, direct to fan connection, that's number one. Number two, why you shouldn't do that is because you think you're out here on Spotify and you're not being a real musician because you got to do promotion or TikToks or Mm -hmm. run ads and stuff. Well, guess what? If you're in the direct to fan business, you're you're a fucking warehouser. You're a t-shirt designer. You're a mailing shipping office. That's Mm -hmm. what you are. Mm -hmm. And so... 
you really don't want this direct to fan connection. Yeah, have an email list, have a text list, get a hold of them, offer some shit like that. Do that. But like this idea that you're going to somehow replace Spotify and YouTube and all these other platforms that reach millions, hundreds of millions of people in their pockets on their phone. The millions um, and millions of the Rocks fans worldwide. Yeah. You're not going to be able to do it. And and bless you. I'm Look, I'm all for people trying for it. I've been open-minded about this. I'm just telling you, the data doesn't support it. Not like, yet. I'm just, it, does, it just doesn't. You're wrong. Yeah. It didn't work. You've lost. Yeah. If you'd like on. to have a patron that uh, really works for you, build a time machine, go back to 1708, <laughs> and uh, get yourself uh, you know, a rich patron that'll commission you to create music and perform it just for their... Their friends in their uh, their aft chambers. Oh, dude, the Medici. I wish we had a Medici. <laughs> we need a Medici to like just give us carte blanche and go. Hey, go chisel something out of that marble. Yeah, take well, as long as you want. Yeah, I think that that's I. There's got to be. Uh, there's, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go on a rant here right now. There's something to be said for art for art's sake. We've talked about this before. Amen. Um, uh, and it doesn't all have to be to generate revenue and make money. You can make, Preach. You, can, you, you, you can get, you can just create something because you want to fucking create it, and that's okay. But if the goal is to make, uh, you know, like your your monthly nut to pay your rent, to pay your mortgage, to God, do it. Do I know a musician that owns a house? Um, no, <laughs> put your I fucking do. hand down. <laughs> <laughs> you got it before it was hard, man. It's a condo, um, though. Yeah. yeah, no, it counts. Um, but you know, like, uh, whatever, if you want to do that and you want to generate a specific amount of money to do that, you you also have to play the game that is afoot currently. Yeah. You don't get to make your own game right now. Now, you can start to make moves to do, to build something alongside with the game you're currently playing because it is a game. So you're trying to level up every time you're trying to consistently. And if you play any video game, you know, uh, just let's just take fucking Super Mario Brothers, for instance. Bleep. The first time you play Super Mario Brothers, it does not go well. No, it does not. Within about fucking 40 feet of that first, like, <laughs> first pipe coming out of you're dead in a hole because you're figuring out how to figure how to play the fucking game. Now, if you play that game for consistently for a little while, you will get better. You'll start beating levels. It'll, you know, you'll go until you're, you know, finally able to go from beginning to end without really doing too much, you know, doing too much damage to your, you know, your brain or anything like that. But if you stop playing that game on the regular, if you go off and you fuck off for a year and you play another game and then come back to Super Mario Brothers, you're going to have to build those skills back up. Yep. So this is the same thing, right? If so, you go, you know, go I, ahead. I think it's a really important point that you're making here is you need to do both and yeah. like dip your feet, dip your toe on the other side of the water there. But especially for younger musicians, like oh, yeah. don't waste this year. Don't waste next year trying to chase something that isn't there yet. Yeah. This is what we have and like it or not. Like, yeah. and by the way, this was the same thing in the 90s and 2000s. You don't yeah. think people sold direct CDs out of the back of their van, 10,000 of them at a clip? Of course. You know, you know what's funny, though, is I don't know how many bands I've been in that, you know, when the band ended, I was the one that ended up with the leftover boxes of CDs in my fucking storage. <laughs> Dude, we had a bespoke CD that, like, we had printers do one part of it. Yeah. And then we had the plastic insert that the CD went into, and then the spindles of CDs. Ooh. We had a party where everyone had to get together and glue them and put together. Yeah. Okay, because it was all custom. Yeah. Well, at the you end have the of the band and days, all that shit? Yeah. guitarist has the plastic stuff. <laughs> the, the drummer had like all of the print the, like these huge huge sheets of like seven or eight up um of the prints and then i had a bunch of the spindles mm -hmm. so unlike most bands they had like a bunch of cds sitting in their closet we all had them around and like no one wanted to talk to each other but if somebody <laughs> needed a cd it was like can we you send me together three of those plastic things and some glue <laughs> <laughs> i'll put yeah. it together and sign your name yeah 
Well, the other part of like the whole thing is like when you say this is like what it was like in the nineties and two two thousands. There has always been some person with a hat, cigar, and a suitcase full of money mm-hmm. that um, had cracked the code on the delivery system for your art. Yeah, and he, you were going to pay him money to do that. He was going to loan you money to make a record. And you were going to, you know, promote the shit out of the record. You were on the bus when they told you. They were at the Tower Records signing babies and kissing uh, fishes, whatever the hell it was. You know, when you were told to, you were doing this show, you were doing this show. You never, your your schedule wasn't your own. And somebody always took 90% of the money. Yeah. At the end of the day. Most of the time, the labels owned the publishing and they owned the master. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? and, and so, go ahead. And well, no, and I'm just, I, I think that, uh, you know, people forget how easy, like the gatekeeping is down. And so you can yeah. do whatever you want to now, but, <clears throat> but that means you have to do everything. Yeah. And like to understand the world that you live in, to be able to write and record, produce, mix, master a song out tonight, and it's everywhere in the world within 48 hours. Yeah. And for sale. And yep. for stream with artwork mm-hmm. on your own platform, on your own named site yeah. with your own artwork. Like everybody's bitching about the payout, but like you really don't pay much to get it there. Yeah. And there, and then the trade off is they're asking mm-hmm. you to send people to there to listen to it. Yeah. And look, I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm not saying, no. I'm not saying it's fair no. even, but yeah. I'm not saying that it doesn't work. It's working for a lot of people. It's yeah. just, it ha- you have to work so much harder to make it work and you got to work a lot smarter to make it work. Yeah. And, and again, these people that are trying to blow it all up and make a web three model for music and all of that, it's already here. You guys, it's already you here. You could start an email list right now and mm-hmm. send out an MP3 every week if you wanted to. And yeah. you could charge people for it. You could charge people. with. They're not going to pay you. It's a lie. It's a lie. Mm-hmm. And maybe, maybe, maybe some mm-hmm. people are going to break out of it. Somebody's yeah. going to do the perfect NFT thing. Somebody's going to do the perfect subscription model. Mm-hmm. But I'm just telling you, I, everybody I talk to, and I've seen people with, you know, four and a half million followers yeah. You know, uh, you got monthly listeners over 800,000. Okay, why don't they just convert that and take all the money and take their ball and go home and do it themselves? Yeah. It just doesn't work that way, you guys. It, it just does doesn't. not. No. Okay, so that's enough of bitching about that, and I'm sorry. No, um, you, so, should not, you should not apologize, but... No, I'm I, not going to apologize. I'm apologize sorry that, that they're stupid. That's what I meant. I'm sorry <laughs> that you can't read the fucking internet and figure out Spotify doesn't pay artists yeah. and stop spreading lies out there to these young kids that are trying to figure it out and wasting their time trying yeah. to get a Cardano wallet and getting <laughs> off their fans well, like a fucking fix Ponzi that. scheme. I'll bleep it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We don't get to say that one anymore. It's racist. I know. It's horrible. I it's know. not. It's And just regional. because you're Jewish doesn't mean that it's okay. I know. It's regional. But yes, it's bad. It's not good. It's not good. Okay. So, um, oh my God, Kelsey, you're going to be so happy. We're going to get to the sink. Sink. Of the, the. Week. 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 Oh my God. We're really in it today. I know. We're feeling this the flow. Awesome. Set it at home. Um, all right, so do you want to start off, or you want me to? Uh, I can. I can. You and mine's it. very timely. It was you uh, do it. You do it. Um, do it. I I uh, a few years ago, like in 2020, I don't know if you remember, there was a there was a Michelob Ultra commercial with Jimmy Butler, uh, where he was uh, singing for uh, um, "You Make My Dreams" by Hall and Oates, yes. while pulling out his clothes and his shoes and just dumping around. Well, they had another one in the in Game 5 last night that I saw, which was him on the team plane singing Only Want to Be With You by Hootie. Mm. And uh, that's my sink of the week, because I just thought it, it was just this... I mean, it was a really intense game last night. And just this little moment of him dancing and singing on a plane. Uh, I'm not a fan of the beer, but I do enjoy the song, and I did enjoy him singing it and dancing it. It was cool. There's a little sports story behind that. Jimmy Butler okay. has been um, is during this kind of improbable run. Hey, look, if you're a Miami Heat fan, 
you had no business being in the finals. This team was a play in. It was an eight seed. It was going to be tough anyway. The Nuggets are just better than everyone. They have been all year long. This is yeah. like it should be no surprise. They were lucky to pull one. And they were, they were just an amazing job of them with understaffed to beat the Celtics to get here. Yeah. So Jimmy Butler is their like, you know, famous point guard, good looking guy, yeah. really yeah. well branded. He. Mm-hmm. In the locker room in Miami has been, when they win, he's yeah, been playing yeah. weird songs like Strokin'. Yeah. But- I'll be stroking. <laughs> and then he was playing Nickelback. <laughs> and then he yeah. was playing, yeah. uh, obviously, Hootie and the Blowfish. And that's yeah. where this comes from. Yeah. He has been like running that locker room with these crazy... I love uh, it. Yeah, with these crazy songs that you would not expect from an NBA player such as him and his age. Let's yeah. put it that way. Culturally, yeah. it's a little bit weird, and that's what makes it great and funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I really, I really enjoy it. That I've been enjoying it. Uh, I went down the rabbit hole a little bit on like you know, like Jimmy Butler sings, and I was like, oh my yeah. god, there's a lot on here, dude. A lot his hairstyle, like, the whole thing with his hair. Go, yeah. Google Jimmy Butler hair some at some time. They had to he he fucked with the NBA by doing all these hairstyles last year. And so before the pictures for the NBA season, yeah. he had this crazy haircut and hairdo. I should say mm-hmm. it was like braids and a fro going on. And <laughs> and they did not want to use it so much so to where the NBA started using the NBA 2K picture. Which is the oh, AI generated <laughs> picture of him? Yeah. So if you get a chance, go down, go down that rabbit hole. I love That's Jimmy awesome. Butler. Um, I hope yeah. he, I hope he hangs around. Yeah. Um, and by the way, only want to be with you, certified banger. That is yeah. one of those songs that's going to last for a long time. It's it's insanely singable and very catchy. Yeah, and just about anybody can sing it too. It's anybody a really can sing it. Really easy place to sing, you know. Thanks, also, Darius, for making that easier. It's got honest. a Miami connection with the Dolphins Make Me pry, Cry with Darius um, Rucker, loving yeah. Miami Dolphins, and Dan Marino was in the video. And boy, do I, I know a lot about, about this. that. That's crazy. I, that is crazy. <laughs> I forgot about all that. Even though he's from the Carolinas, I believe. Darius, yeah. I believe the band came from North Carolina, maybe something like You're that. You're probably right. Something um, like that. Yeah, someone to spot check me on that. Okay, mine is from a new Apple TV show, mm. Platonic. Oh, the Seth Rogen show. Seth Rogen, uh, Rose Byrne. I had to and check myself and make sure I hadn't said Joe Rogan there. The new Joe Rogan show. <laughs> Just kidding. Isn't that weird that the aliens built pyramids? No. Um, so, they yeah, Seth, Seth Rogen, Rogen, the good Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, True to Forum, another Apple TV show where you do not completely like everyone in the show. They're all flawed Excellent. as fuck. Um, but in the end of the one of the episodes, I think it was the second or third, I think there's only three or four episodes out now, mm. but I've been burning through it. Um, in the end title credits, um, there is, a, or the end title run, is there's a, a text exchange between Seth and, and Rose's character. Yeah. And it's just really nice. And it's from Bleacher's. And it's oh, called very nice. Hate That You Know Me, which is oh. a song from like 2017. So it's kind of Fantastic. an older song. Yeah. And it's from, you know, a little nice struggling songwriter and producer um, that you've probably never heard of, Jack Does Antonoff. He, oh, um, yeah. Who's he been working with lately? I had some, well, some, guy named, some guy named Taylor Swift. I don't know if that's correct. Um, Lord. I don't know Lord who that Duh. is. Also, Lord Lana Del Rey or something, Ray so I'm oh, not really I'm sure. I'm sad just listening to her name. Yeah. He was also in another <laughs> band that hasn't done anything called Fun. I'm <laughs> like, you know, he's poor, poor oh, Jack Antonoff. Uh, just right. can't seem to get his career going. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and by the way, um, let's see. Who was it that was? Uh, Manish Ravel was. Uh, oh. Uh, one of the music supervisors. And I think there might be another one, but that's the big one. Um, So that's the big one for you for the sync of the week. And we'll go ahead and wrap this sucker up. Thank you guys so much for listening. Um, We'll check the charts and get back to y'all on where we are. Norway's still going strong. I know we are gaining in Iceland. Oh, I so, love that we've got a bunch of fucking Nordic people yeah, on our have team. We're going to have to go up there and do a live podcast with I our would brothers love and sisters. To. I yeah, would love from like, to. From like the, uh, the, the, the pools and stuff, right? <gasps> yeah. And then we can go drink vodka at the ice bar. Yes. 
you, you really, you had me at vodka. I know. <laughs> vodka, pool, and ice. I'm in. Yeah. Um, so you guys make sure to rate and subscribe us. Leave some of those dirty comments. They're coming yes, in fast we and furious. Those. We, uh, as soon as Kelsey gets off of her hangover, I mean better from her sickness. <laughs> She will approve some more she of that. a little bit of the brown bottle flu. You can email us, twoshotsmusicpod at gmail.com, and follow us anywhere at Two Shots Music Pod on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and such. Um, and we really appreciate it, you guys. Send Thank us you your so. questions. Send us your questions. We like the questions. We do like the questions. They're very nice. Two and shots until music then, pod. we will talk to you soon. Godspeed, y'all. Bye. Bye.